Okay, so in this video we're going to continue on from taking the original PDF file, changing it into an SVG. We're going to take and start making a design to put that SVG design of this airplane right here on. So this is what the finished product will come close to looking like. I'm only going to get you to the point of getting this airplane onto this piece. All the rest is just up to you or what you want to do. But the main things that we're going to be looking at are going to be, we're going to be using sheet metal. Um, we're going to be doing a flange. The flange cannot be done on a complete circle, so I'll have to break this circle into, uh, a, you know, five thousandths gap, and then I'll do a slight extrusion on the edge of the metal after it's been drawn out, and that'll create a flat straight area, and then that's how we can get up to the next thing of unfold. We can unfold it, then we'll put some lines on to guide us. I usually put four on so that I can see my different uh, sections of my the, the rectangle, center things up, etc. And then uh, we'll come back and refold it and it'll end up looking like this. Um, there is a K factor that could be, if you're really wanting to get technical, like you want to actually make this. I wanted to keep my circle just as long as it's divided evenly that doesn't make a difference to me so I'm not going to get into that but if you do want to just remember that modify in sheet metal they have the sheet metal rules and you can bring them up if you don't want this thing to grow or shrink during folding or unfolding you need the K factor set to zero and I've had mixed results so anyways we'll go ahead and I'm going to design this up from scratch and we'll go from there so I want to create a sketch I want the YZ plane so that I can uh, rotate as my machine does around the x-axis and we'll create this circle once we get the circle created I could have dimensioned it then but I forgot to so I want to do that I want a four inch diameter that's with the Yeti mug that I'm going to be uh, doing and now I need to break that my easiest way that's worked pretty well is to draw a line and then take and draw a second line parallel to it so that I can uh, go ahead and make my gap and then trim off the other excess stuff that we don't need so we're going to dimension this I only need it to be five thousandths and now we can zoom in on this stuff and you can see that I got a five thousandths line now separate we can trim it out I don't need that and now I don't need these lines we'll get a little air saying that but I got my points that I really need so now I would or can use my flange tool and create this next uh, part in sheet metal if it's a circle it won't let you select it so here is the sketch that we're gonna do and I want it to come out three inches and if you notice right off this is putting the material of the metal on the outside of that diameter I don't want that because that kind of messes up my overall diameter so we'll go ahead and select side two that puts it on the inside so now it won't uh, bother me there We'll run this out to three inches. Now we have a circle that we can uh, work with. Now my only problem is, is if you were to try to unfold this, and I'll show you real quick, and you would think that the edge of the circle would be flat, but I, as I run this cursor over it, nothing is highlighting. None of these sides. This is the side I'm wanting to do, and it won't do it. So the workaround is to grab an extrusion. I'm going to extrude from that side. And I only need it to be a couple thousandths. So right now we can see that it extruded off the edge of the circle a couple thousandths. That's all I need. We'll join it up. Click that. Because now for the next step, we want to unfold. And if this was a circle, the unfold needs a flat stationary unidirectional piece and it won't select the lines up and down or anything like that but we can go to looking at the bottom 
and select the bottom of that, which is my outside. So I'm going to select that, and now for the bend, it's just the bend of the circle. And basically this piece is going to unroll um, counterclockwise. And as you can see, it flattened out. And now I have a workable part to uh, import our design onto. So I'll click OK on that. Now I need to flip this up. This is the bottom, which is still that outside because I extruded that piece just a little bit that way. So now I can sit here and do a sketch. I want to make sure I don't select a plane down here because that is two inches below this piece. So I want to make my sketch on that, which is, again, the bottom. And I think I'd let's finish the sketch. I don't like I don't know where I ended up getting it, so let's delete this. And we'll bring it back on. I'm gonna select it now. And I want to draw some lines. I'm gonna pick the x-axis again, which is actually the z or the z-axis, I guess it would be. No, this is the x-axis. And then I'm going to put four more lines. Or a total of four. Out here. And then I'm going to do a measure. I can measure this. It's a driven. That's all that was about. So now I know the distance of that. So now I can do this from that and I want it to be 12.2152 divided by 4 so I know it's 3.03 .03 or 0538 so now I can do this to the next 3.05 And to this, 3.0538. And now if we actually do this to this, we see that, yes, it is also the same. So now I broke it down. I know this is going to be the top dead center of this thing when I start my drawing. I want to change these to working lines by hitting the X, selecting them, and hitting X. That way I don't have any weird issues. And now we want to do our insert. So we wanted to insert. It was the SVG file. The jet. We'll open it up. So here it's imported in. Now I can take and center things up. Spin it around, scale it up, and move it to where I wanted. You know, if I wanted four of these planes sitting around it, I could do another one over here and another one over here. And then I'd have to do a, a fourth one on a different drawing. Or I just start them at the edge and redo my quarters in between each of these and make my four. I only need one. And we want it centered up. So it doesn't have to be exact. Looks pretty good to me from there. Yep. And then select OK. And it'll process just a little bit. It's going to spit it out. And it'll be there for you. OK, so we've imported this piece onto my rectangle. And now we can actually go into the solid part and do a slight extrusion. And this is where I was talking about my lines working out nicely. I just want to do the frame. I can now select the frame. Oh, I got my line in there. Hang on. Let's get this line out of there. And now I can come in here and select this. And you can see it selects all of my stuff other than this one piece because it was completely separate and I can now put a trace on all that really easily because I'm going to engrave this by cutting it 
We got two selected. This is going to be a cut. It's going to be five thousandths. And we need to go the other direction, so it's a negative five thousandths. And now it's OK. We can click that. And now when we look at our piece, after it does it, we can tip it a little bit. And you'll see that we have our little engraving of the whole outside. And now I can select these in Sprout Cam. So now that we've engraved that piece, we can go back to Sheet Metal and say Refold the Faces. We're going to refold them. Again, we were looking at the bottom. And it takes it a little bit because now it has all these lines. And if we were to rotate this up to the top now, we can see that we have a nicely engraved part with that SDV and all the edges that we needed to bring into this next piece to trace. So that is how you can unfold, import stuff, draw your letters, uh, etc. on a circle. So unfolding and folding of a cylinder of known size.